Hey there, my name is Adrian, freelance web scraper. Adrian at the webscrapingguy.com. If you need anything web scrape, let me know. Today we are going to be scraping Google Jobs using Puppeteer, Node.js. I'm a Node.js developer, so that is what we are going to be using. So Google Jobs here. So if you, yeah, Google Jobs, we'll find Google Jobs. And then you click like on this and we want yeah, this stuff here. Now, how I normally go about trying to figure out how to scrape something is we're going to check out the network tab here. And I really don't like it. I think doc. What is this name? Perfect. So normally I'm going to see, I'm going to try to paginate. And when you endlessly scroll, or when you have an infinite scroll, you just scroll. And then they're making some sort of fetch request, some sort of Ajax call. But Google obfuscates their responses with their own syntax, whatever. They don't return JSON. They return this nastiness here. So it's easier if we just use Puppeteer. Normally, I am very against using Puppeteer, but it's either spend, like, I bet that there are packages, and if anyone knows, please let me know. If there are packages that parse the uh, Google responses, I forget what, what this is called, what Google returns that as. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, whatever. So to be quicker about it, we are just going to use Puppeteer. It's a lot more expensive, but whatever. It's, yeah, so much quicker to build it. So what we are going to do is, yeah, here they make it, uh, if you want to keep things like location, uh, work from home, all these things here, then you want to just grab everything that is in that URL and yeah, just paste it like as URL, like let URL equals. And then we just want to replace our search with uh, the actual term. So in this, ter in this case, we're searching for marketing. And so all you have to do is split the string and join by plus and the same thing that happens in Google search and then just add the rest of the URL string and you're good to go. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it yeah, as far as the URL goes. And then one of the big things that we have to figure out is the auto scroll. Yeah, how to get that auto scroll to work. Now, thankfully for you, I already figured that out. You just need to figure out, which is kind of tricky. You need to figure out which div is the one that is scrolling. So this one isn't it because it's just one of the items. Keep going up. So, okay, yep, these are all list items. And this is the div, so it could be that one or like any of these. And which one did I find? Yeah, so it's this one right here. As of August 23, it's the class GWS plugins, blah, 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 that. And if you'd like uh, the code for this, drop a comment and I can send you the code. So that is the one that's going to scroll. And then I just created this auto scroll from chat GPT actually very helpful if you want that function this function is super helpful I think it works for like pretty much any auto scroll you just need to put in the element you need to find the element that is scrolling and then I think it'll just do the rest for you if you need to wait so say the requests are coming back uh, pretty slowly so you scroll and then this uh, response or response takes a while to get back then you can just delay that by more in Google Maps I had to change this to 20 seconds which was obnoxious 
So you, after you scroll, you have all of the HTML, so we're gonna print the HTML. And then here is the pain in the butt is actually uh, parsing everything together and pain in the butt it was. So we are gonna first get uh, all of the details by this ID and that is like slightly different, I think. And then we're just gonna loop through and I don't, I'm not 100% sh sure if this is the ID but each of them has this data encoded doc ID. I mean, doc ID, you'd think so. So I use that as the ID, not 100% sure if that is true. And then thankfully the titles, darn, are all H2, so you just grab the H2, so fine. And I'm using Cheerio to parse all of this. And pro tip, you don't wanna try and parse the HTML using Puppeteer that is a losing battle, pain in the ass, uh, really not fun to do. So I recommend using Cheerio and pro pro tip is to save this, yeah, right file sync. And I always just have like a test.html file. That way, instead of running Puppeteer all the time, I can just get that HTML back and run it. And then I can inspect that more and see like why it's not working. So, yeah, it's kind of to isolate, you know, Puppeteer is just for getting the HTML, and then this section here is to, I call it, I usually have a function called JSONify, which JSONifies it, but for this one I don't. So like I said, using Cheerio here, and then the apply link, and how you find all of this stuff is, you know, we're on the LI here, so these are each individual items, and like we just need to find okay we want this title and that's not an h2 actually oh you know what we're doing is we are getting this i believe yes this right here so somehow uh, i'm not sure how i figured this out actually what is this thing here so this id Um, I don't remember where this lives, but that is like what is right here. And I think when you scroll, then it just prints them out all over the place. Anyway, just follow along. Uh, but yeah, somehow I figured out that you want to get all of this stuff and not parse this. Or I think I do parse this as well, but anyway. So this is what we're looking at. So this is an H2, so thank goodness that's like pretty easy. And then I get this link by, and obviously the class names are all obfuscated. So that makes it a little bit harder because I believe anytime that they have a new deployment, those are going to change. So you don't necessarily want to rely on those class names. So for the apply link, I actually find all of the A tags with, uh, or just find all of the A tags. And then if the text starts with apply, then return true, then I know that that's my A tag, and then get the uh, get the apply link. So that's how we get the apply link. And these are all, let's see, you just have to like go down the tree and see how everything is, is structured here. So like we have, this is the top, portion here so we're going to start everything from right there obviously and then it looks like it goes into this div and then you have a couple sections here so really you just need to like find this section which is like div parent or div immediate child immediate child that one's really easy and then this one is like the uh zero one to like third child so company and location, so that's how I found this one. So children, first, children, first, children, first, children, and then children, that one, company and location. Oh yeah, that's how I found this, this right here. So the location right now is anywhere, and then that's the company right there. And so that's how I found, so it's, here's the main one, children first, children first, Children first, and that's the first, well, zero with child, and then this one is the first child. 
So with all of these that I'm doing on Google, and I have a, a video about how to scrape Google Maps, and then I always go by like where the items are at, and, and I don't necessarily go by class name unless they have a nice uh, English um, plain, not obfuscated name that I can grab. And then I don't grab the highlights yet. I just grab the job description. I suppose I could uh, just easily grab the highlights, but I'll let you do that actually if you want. So same kind of thing with apply. You know, I don't want to rely on the class name. So the description, let's just find that here. You know, that it's really hard to find because the div doesn't even have a class name or anything. Oh, actually, so the real tricky thing is here's the actual name of the job description thing. And then you actually have to go up one. And then here, it's actually a sibling. That's where it has the text. So a little bit tricky. So I'll show you how I did that here. So same kind of thing with the apply link. I want to find the, the div with the job description text. So if the text includes job description, boom, we know that that is the text, the job description. Then we want to find, we were going to go to the parent and the next is like the next uh, sibling and then get that text. Boom. That's what we want. So you would do the same thing with uh, job highlights, but I felt like it's a little bit too much to have the highlights as well, but I might include that. And then I did actually get the jobs in the scroll bar or the, the information there. And I think the only information that I got there was the source and via Upwork. And I think it actually has it on right here, like directly get it. Yeah. So you could just get that from the apply link. So apply direct. So yeah, on, you just replace or split by on, grab the last element and then interpolate via and that last element it looks like. Yeah, I didn't really need to do that because I was grabbing via indeed, but it's like the same thing here. It's a, it's just on indeed. So, oops, man, Upwork. Uh, can't imagine that these are actual uh, job listings. It looks like I wonder if they're like just looking for freelancers or something because there's so much that's needed. Huh? Very interesting. Or maybe those are just, I think those are just job postings actually. So interesting. Probably should filter out Upwork for work from home jobs because they're just freelance stuff. Yeah, contractor. And I think that's it. So if you want the code for this, I'm happy to share it. Just drop a comment in the, whatever this is going to be, Twitter or YouTube. And if you need anything else scraped, hit me up, adrian at thewebscrapingguy.com.